Tall Timbers Research Station is out here tonight, dragging milk jugs to get the salt marsh to reveal its secrets. Black rails are considered to be the most secretive bird in North America. Yellow rails are considered to be the second most secretive bird in North America. This is all work done by a NOAA Restore Science funded project nicknamed Firebird. Little is known about black and yellow rails and their habitat is disappearing. These researchers are working to learn about these marsh birds, their relationship to fire, and what they need to survive rising seas. Start until 7? Yeah, 30 minutes after sunset, but I figured sure. Rob wanted to get sure. some food. Do you want to say anything on the camera? No. <laughs> <laughs> we are at a site in Big Bend, Florida, and normally this area is full of bunch grasses like Spartina patens and Spartina bakeri with lots of juncus or black needle rush. And it's really, really good habitat for both black rails and yellow rails. As you can see, the grass is just a couple centimeters tall right now. And that's because they just burned this area two weeks ago. The fire moves slowly, giving birds a chance to get away. So in an area like this, there are sort of low-lying wet areas and higher areas. And typically the low-lying wet areas do not burn as well. And the birds have time to crawl their way out and fly to adjacent marshes. It's very rare that we're gonna walk around an area like this and find bird carcasses. They've evolved in this area. They know when a fire is coming and they'll fly to adjacent marshes. And then once the habitat becomes suitable again and the vegetation grows back, they'll just come right back into it. Even nocturnal animals have time to wake up and find a safe space. Fire keeps woody shrubs in check, maintaining a grassy environment suitable for rails. Rails, like quail, are firebirds. The NOAA Firebird Project is taking place all along the Gulf Coast from Texas to Florida. And our team is covering the Florida section, so we're in parts of the Panhandle and in Big Bend. The marsh is already green and growing a couple weeks later. Within a couple months, the grass will be tall enough to shelter the secretive rails. In the meantime, Heather's team heads down the road to another marsh site where they had previously found black rails. Here's a black rail captured in a previous survey. Black rails were listed as federally threatened in October of 2020, and there's really not a lot known about them. Black rails are considered to be the most secretive bird in North America, and it's for good reason. They kind of act like a mouse. So they're pretty reluctant to fly. They inhabit very dense vegetation that can be really hard for researchers and field personnel to access, and they don't vocalize very much. Yellow rails are considered to be the second most secretive bird in North America. So they're also very challenging to study. And because they're here in the winter, they're not vocalizing very frequently either. Black and yellow rails live just off the coast in what is known as the high marsh. So the high marsh is an area that doesn't get tidally inundated on a daily basis like your low marsh does. They're really small birds. They're not very good swimmers. And so this is uh, an example of a couple centimeters of water that would create good foraging habitat, but surrounded kind of by this higher and drier area. Everywhere you see a little uh, poop here, you can attach a bottle on. What we do in the wintertime to find these birds is we conduct drag line surveys in which we take a long 15 meter line with bottles connected to it. And these bottles have cat toys, so they make a lot of noise. And we walk transects up and down habitat to flush these birds. 20 minutes in, they find something. Virginia rail. Oh, cool. Pretty. Not one of their study birds. The Virginia rail is slightly less secretive and a little larger than the black or yellow. There are lots of days of just zeros, of no data where we don't hear or see birds, but then every time we do, it's a really novel and unique observation. 
And then, finally. Yep. Nice one. Hey, so cool. You can have a yellow. All good. In this particular plot, yeah, this is the first yellow rail we've had, and this is our third visit this year, and I think we dragged this area three times last year, too. They take measurements and ban the bird. If the bird is recaptured, a researcher can read its band and find something out about its life history while adding new information. The whole crux of this project is really looking at fire. It's a little early for results, but what we're kind of finding is that in, in most high marshes, but somewhere between two and five years seems to produce optimal habitat for black rails and yellow rails. Sometimes I'll do this cool little trick. It's a nice way to release them and get them acclimated to not being the light anymore. Oh, she's already doing it, so she's just gonna sit there for a second. Aside from the regular burning, rails here benefit from an extensive habitat. We're really, really lucky in the panhandle here that we have a really undeveloped coastline, meaning we have thousands and thousands of acres of really nice salt marsh habitat. And that is great for black rails and yellow rails. It's been really, really amazing to be part of this project and just kind of learning things from the, from the ground up. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.